Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and slide creators out there. This is ProSlidePacks.com. Rick bringing you some information requested by Eddie Cochran, <clears throat> who had some questions about how I was using a text field to manipulate the screens in this video. So, just to give you an idea of what's going on, and since it was already done, take a look at this. On this one, it has three text fields. Uh, there's one, two you see there. This third one is hidden. It's not going to work for you because I was experimenting with what I came up with over here. And that is, is that you see this monitor? Okay. Now, if you come down here to text field two, this is really not a text field. This is, um, this is a control field, the way I'm using it. So right now you're looking at monitor number one, right? So if you put a two in here, and then you click on the top of the slide, look at that. You have a different monitor. And I have five monitors I stuck in here to see if this would actually work, and it, it works pretty good. So, okay, so that's monitor number two. So let me come in here and put a three in here. Three, click the top of the slide up here. Bam, you see two and three monitors look the same. So as you can see, that text field number two is being used as a control field to control which monitor graphic is showing when the sequence runs okay so understand that the movie clip is going to come out as the you know the screen that turns and sits here for whatever delay you put in here and then it moves out right okay so this is how that's happening. It gets to this spot right here, and then whatever delay you add gets inserted there. Now, for those, there was a couple of questions about how to, this is two and a half seconds. If you want to shorten this, just remove some frames. This thing will slide over because anytime anybody adds in that delay slide view, happens right here. You know, so it's like you're stuffing time in here, and then it moves the endpoint out, you know, to give you more time. If you don't want this two and a half seconds prior to this marker, then just delete some frames in here and it will move this marker over and then you know you can even move it down to five or ten frames I would leave it at least a couple of frames but um, whatever works for your particular project okay so now um, note that this movie clip here is named monitor frame okay movie clip name is monitor frame alright so the reason that's important is because this is where the action is inside this movie clip I have all of the different uh, frames so that's the first second third fourth and fifth now the other thing you need to pay attention to is right up here um, these are action uh, frames which means this is uh, action script code what that does is these are stop commands because normally if you come in here normally when you have a movie clip it wants to play if you have multiple frames it's going to play those multiple frames but I mean this is that's not good so um, what this does is it allows you to use each frame as kind of like a storage area or compartment or whatever you want to call it it's, it is it's a frame with the individual image on it that's technically what it really is uh, but this is just a way to manipulate that process instead of using it as multiple frames that create an animation you're using it to manipulate a UI uh, in this case uh, the frame for the video uh, in here in the action script code you can see the action script frames one two three four and five each one of them has a stop command in there so it'll come to that frame and stop and that way when you're sequencing the video the monitor will pass on by in that particular style when you send the command to change the frame then it'll go to that frame and stop and that monitor graphic will show okay all right so I, I just want to let you know what's happening on the inside of this because it's important to know so I show you the other code you understand what's happening we're inside of the movie clip so let me get out all right monitor frame movie clip okay so what this is text number one if I am Yep, it is because it won't let me select it. It's locked over here. This is text number one. You can see that right there. Okay, so when you add text into number one, uh, you will uh, get the message that listed here. Now, text number two 
is actually down here off the screen. This is the one that manipulates which uh, monitor graphic you're looking at. Okay, but I just have it off the screen, no animation, so you never see it. But you can enter stuff into it. And the code that does the magic is right here. Now, this other stuff that's below it, this is me experimenting with stuff, so that doesn't apply. Uh, but here's what we're doing here. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, programming, this is a variable. Variable is a, is a thing you use in programming uh, that holds a value, a string, number, or object. In this case, we have a variable that holds a number. A and this is a text field. You see, text number two. Now, some people don't use this. This means this particular text field in this. Well, well anyway, uh, some people use it, some people don't. This has to do with object oriented programming. Not important for this particular example. It doesn't have to be here. Um, I just have it here because when you select it out of this object, it comes in. So text field number two, this is the actual text field inside of the movie clip text number two, right? And then this is the property that allows you to get the value typed in to the text field that's inside of the movie clip text two. So we're getting that value typed in we're converting it to a number and putting it in the variable called monitor screen. All right. So then you got you go through here because remember we don't have we have frames one, two, three, four, and five. So the number can't be anything else other than that. Otherwise, we get an error. So this way is how I'm preventing that error. This says if the monitor screen is less than or equal to zero, make it one. I mean, if they put in negative twenty-four in there, no. Now, this is not an Arctic variable, even though I am in Alaska. This is a variable from numbers 1 to 5. Okay, and this says right here, if, somebody, if some idiot puts 115 in there, well, it says if the monitor screen value is greater than or equal to 5, then make it 5. That way we stay within our range, okay? And then remember, monitor frame, uh, the, the uh, movie clip. Okay, so here's the monitor frame. And what we're doing, we're telling the monitor frame to go to and stop at the frame number that's represented by monitor screen. So if you type a three in here, then it'll go to and stop at frame three inside. I mean, the monitor frame movie clip will go to and stop at frame three. That'll show you that third monitor graphic. Now the movie clip will still continue to move. This doesn't affect any of the animation. So it'll come in and it'll turn and then it'll fly out, but it'll show you this particular graphic because you're moving the movie clip. It's like the movie clip is like a virtual box, right? And inside that box, it has the ability to put different graphics on the front of it, just like women put makeup on. Sorry, women. And uh, so what you so you just moving this box across the screen and turning it in different angles, but you can also control internal animation. But what we're doing is we're just using each frame of that potential animation as a different screen. So when you run this code and make this adjustment, you're telling the monitor frame while it's moving back and forth to show show frame one, then show frame two, then show frame three, depends upon what you choose in here. That's basically what is going on. So this here's the movie clip. It's traveling across the screen. That must be number four. I think that's what the default value is. Now inside of the movie clip. Here are the monitors. So if somebody pick one, that's what they're going to see. They pick two, they're going to see that one. They pick three, they're going to see that one. They pick four, they're going to see that one. They pick five, they'll see that one. You know, what your the movie clip internally has these different... Because remember, if you just played and I didn't have the stop commands, that's what you'd see. And that's not helpful. But because we can control the actions on a frame-by-frame -frame basis... That's what we got here. One, here's two, three, four, and five. So, not so we're just moving the movie clip across. A um, movie clip across the screen, and the code here. Also, pay attention that this code happens 
in frame one of slide info which is this very top uh, layer here okay so right at the beginning of this this happens boom I mean this you'd be amazed at how much stuff can happen in the first frame of these movies it runs really fast but anyway all this happens in that very first frame so in a blink of an eye boom this is done you know that's why when you change the number in the text field you have to click on the slide in the display because what you're doing then is you're just resetting it to net to frame number one so once you change that text field you would click up here and what that does that restarts you know the uh, the slide and that means your frame one coding gets processed right then okay so I hope that uh, does it for you um, keep this in mind because this is this is a fun thing to play with and you can do a lot with it you can't have any more than this one pause in here but um, that's not going to be a problem in the future so for right now uh, this is how you play with that delete some frames in here that moves this over this is two and a half seconds so far if you want to reduce it down more so that whatever you do is going to happen for 10 frames and then the person will have the chance to delay it or won't delay and then it'll just continue on but basically all this does is like you're stuffing time in here and pushing this endpoint out further further and further okay so that's final frame right there at frame 60 normally so check it out. Anyway, that's all I got for today, everybody. ProSlidePacks.com. Rick here, signing off.